title, The Chilling Secret of Our Glamping Nightmare. In the heart of a secluded forest, nestled among the towering pines, lay the promise of an idyllic escape from the mundane. Our group of friends, enticed by the allure of glamping, a glamorous twist on traditional camping set, out to experience nature without forsaking the comforts of modernity. The destination was a newly established site, praised for its luxurious accommodations and untouched wilderness. Little did we know, our dream getaway was about to spiral into a chilling nightmare. The journey to the site was itself a descent into isolation. The further we drove from civilization, the more the untamed forest seemed to close in around us. Upon arrival, the camp manager, a gaunt man with a forced smile, greeted us. His eyes, though welcoming, harbored a flicker of unease. We were led to our lavish tents, equipped with plush bedding and antique furnishings. A stark contrast to the wildness that surrounded us. The first night passed in blissful ignorance. We were enchanted by the serene beauty of the forest and the comforting crackle of the campfire. Stories and laughter filled the air until we retired to our tents, lulled to sleep by the gentle rustle of the trees. But as the nights progressed, so did the sense of unease. Subtle at first, the forest's nocturnal chorus seemed to carry a dissonant note, an undercurrent of whispers that danced on the edge of perception. We tried to dismiss it as the product of overactive imaginations, fueled by the ghost stories we had shared. However, the feeling of being watched from the shadows grew increasingly oppressive as if the forest itself harbored a malevolent presence. The turning point came on the third night. One of our group, Ava, vanished. We awoke to find her tent empty, the flap open and swaying gently in the breeze. Panic set in as we called her name, our voices swallowed by the dense thicket. The camp manager, upon hearing of her disappearance, paled to a sickly white. His reaction was not one of surprise, but of resigned horror, as if Eva's fate was an outcome he had long feared. The search for Eva led us deep into the forest, far beyond the boundaries of the camp. It was there, in a clearing shrouded in mist, that we stumbled upon an ancient stone structure, half swallowed by the earth. The air around it was unnaturally cold, and the silence was oppressive, as if sound itself dared not enter. Within the structure lay the remnants of what appeared to be a ritual site, its origins lost to time. At its center, a stone altar, stained with the passage of uncounted years, and there, etched into the stone, were symbols that seemed to twist and squirm under our gaze their meaning elusive, yet deeply unsettling. It was then that the realization dawned upon us. The camp, the forest, and the stone structure were all parts of a tapestry woven from dark and ancient threads. The camp's true purpose, masked beneath the veneer of luxury, was something far more sinister. We were not guests, offerings to whatever lay dormant beneath the forest floor, awakened by our presence. As we stood in the clearing, the chilling secret of our glamping nightmare laid bare. The forest seemed to close in around us, its whispers growing into a cacophonous roar. We knew then that we had to escape, to flee from the unspeakable horror that lurked in the heart of the wilderness. But as we turned to leave, we found that the path which had led us there had vanished, swallowed by the dense undergrowth. The forest, once a place of beauty, had been
become a labyrinthine prison, its paths shifting and changing, leading us further into despair. And so, our story ends not with escape, but with the ominous realization that we were ensnared in a web far more complex and terrifying than we could have imagined what became of us, and the truth behind the chilling secret of our glamping nightmare remains shrouded in the mists of that ancient forest, a tale yet to be continued as we stood, ensnared in the heart of that ancient whispering forest, the air thick with an impending sense of doom. We realized our ordeal was far from over, the disappearance of Eva, the eerie stone structure, and the camp's hidden malevolence were mere threads in a larger, more intricate tapestry of terror. With every attempt to retrace our steps, the forest seemed to mock us, its paths twisting and turning in impossible ways. The once benign sounds of nature were now laden with sinister undertones, as if the very trees were conspiring against us. As night began to fall, casting long shadows that danced like specters in the dimming light, our desperation grew. The cold was more biting, seeping into our bones and sapping our will. It was then, in our darkest hour, that we stumbled upon a dilapidated cabin, half hidden by overgrowth and seemingly abandoned. The decision to seek shelter within its crumbling walls was made with trepidation. The cabin, with its air of neglect, seemed to harbor its own secrets. Inside, the remnants of someone's life were strewn about a broken chair, a rusted tin can, a child's doll with one eye missing, gazing vacantly from the corner. It was a place frozen in time, a snapshot of a life abruptly abandoned. As we explored the shadowed interior, a discovery in the cabin's farthest corner sent a chill down our spines. Carved into the wooden floor was a symbol, identical to those we had seen at the stone altar in the forest. This was no coincidence. The cabin was part of the same dark narrative that had ensnared us. Night enveloped the forest, and with it came a silence so profound, it felt like a weight upon our chests. The air grew colder, and a thick fog began to seep through the cracks and crevices of the cabin, wrapping its cold fingers around us. It was then that the whispers began anew, this time clearer, as if the fog itself carried voices' voices that spoke in a language we could not understand, but felt deep within our marrow. They were not the voices of the living, but of something else, something ancient and bound to the forest. Our resolve to leave at first light was unanimous, but as the hours passed, the distinction between wakefulness and nightmare began to blur. Vivid, horrifying visions plagued us, each more disturbing than the last. We saw the forest in times long past, a place of rituals and blood, where the veil between worlds was thin and could be traversed by those who knew the old ways. As dawn approached, with its promise of light and a fleeting hope of escape, we realized that one of us was missing. James, who had been standing watch by the window, peering into the impenetrable fog, was gone. The only sign of his departure was the open door, swinging silently in the morning breeze. We called out for him, our voices desperate, but the forest remained indifferent. Its secrets veiled in mist, the realization that we were being picked off, one by one, by an unseen force, was paralyzing. The 
decision to leave the dubious safety of the cabin and venture once more into the forest was fraught with fear and uncertainty. Yet staying meant certain doom. As we stepped into the fog shrouded dawn, the forest seemed to wake, its whispers rising to a chorus of unseen voices, guiding, or perhaps hurting us deeper into its heart. Our journey through the mist was a descent into madness, each step taking us further from the world we knew and deeper into a realm of shadows and whispers. The forest, alive with ancient and malevolent forces, seemed to relish our despair. And so we continue, our numbers dwindling, our hope a flickering flame in the oppressive darkness of the forest. The chilling secret of our glamping nightmare remains veiled in shadow, its full horror yet to be revealed. As we stood, trapped within the heart of the forest, the realization of our predicament settled like a cold shroud over us. The camp, once a beacon of luxury amidst the wilderness, now seemed like a distant memory, a cruel mirage that had lured us into the maw of an unseen beast. The forest, alive and whispering, seemed to watch us with a thousand unseen eyes, its intentions as obscure as the shifting shadows at dusk. With no path to guide us and the oppressive canopy blotting out the sky, time became a meaningless concept, each moment stretching into eternity. Our initial panic gave way to a grim determination. If the forest sought to ensnare us, we would not succumb without a struggle. We decided to move, to keep walking in what we hoped was the direction of the camp. Though with each step, the forest seemed to twist and contort, leading us in circles. It was during one of these aimless wanderings that we stumbled upon a clearing, one we hadn't encountered before. At its center stood an ancient tree its gnarled limbs stretching towards the sky like the fingers of a skeletal hand. Beneath the tree lay scattered belongings, a chilling tableau of those who had come before us. Among the detritus, a journal, its pages weathered by time, caught our attention. The entries were written by a camper who had vanished years prior. A name we recognized from missing person reports that had been a fleeting news story, soon forgotten by the world beyond the forest. The journal spoke of the same unease, the same whispers in the dark, and a discovery that had filled its author with dread. They wrote of an ancient curse, one that bound the 
spirit of the forest to the land, a curse that demanded a tribute of souls to slake its eternal hunger. The final entry was a frantic scrawl, a warning to leave before the forest claimed them, as it had claimed so many before. Armed with this new knowledge, the pieces of the horrifying puzzle began to fall into place. The camp manager's unease, the vanishing of Eva, the ritual site. It was all interconnected, a cyclical horror that fed on the unwary. As darkness fell, the forest seemed to come alive with a malevolent energy. The whispers grew louder, now discernible as voices, pleading, warning, threatening. We were not alone. The spirits of those consumed by the curse roamed the forest, trapped in an eternal limbo between life and death. In a desperate bid for freedom, we sought to return to the ritual site, to perhaps find a way to break the curse and free ourselves. But the forest, as if sensing our intent, became more treacherous rain shifting underfoot, roots snaring our ankles, branches reaching out like hands. And then, amidst the chaos of our flight, a scream pierced the night, halting us in our tracks. It was one of our own, taken by the forest, their fate now sealed as another whisper among many. The realization hit us then with the force of a physical blow. We were not merely lost. We were ensnared, pawns in a game that stretched back centuries. The forest, the camp, the ancient curse all of it was a carefully crafted trap. One that had ensnared countless before us and would ensnare countless after. As we huddled together, the cold dread of our situation closing in we knew that our story was far from over. The forest had claimed us, and whether we would become its next victims or unravel the mysteries that bound it to its curse remained to be seen. Our tale, a chilling chapter in the ongoing saga of the glamping nightmare, hangs in the balance. A thread in the web of a story that continues to unfold its conclusion as yet unwritten, trapped within the enigmatic embrace of the forest. Our sense of time began to distort, blurring the line between night and day. The dense canopy above shrouded the sky, casting us in perpetual twilight. Desperation clawed at our minds as we wandered through the labyrinthine woods, each turn leading us deeper further from salvation. The camp manager, whose knowledge of these woods was now our frail beacon of hope, seemed to unravel before our eyes. The stoic facade he maintained crumbled, revealing a man tormented by guilt and fear. He spoke in hushed tones of the forest's ancient guardians, entities born from the soil and the shadow of the secrets buried beneath the earth. His ancestors, bound by a pact forged in desperation, had served these guardians, offering them homage to ensure the balance was kept. The glamping site, a guise to fulfill this ancient covenant, had now become our prison. As we delved into the depths of the forest, strange phenomena began to manifest. Objects from our camp appeared before us, twisted and mangled, as if the forest itself rejected their presence. Whispers filled the air, not in any tongue known to man, but in a cadence that stirred an innate dread within our souls. Shadows danced at the edge of our vision, forms both humanoid and wholly other, watching waiting. It was during one of our aimless treks that we stumbled upon a clearing. 
different from the one that harbored the stone structure. At its center stood an ancient tree, its gnarled branches clawing at the sky, and at its base a cavernous hollow that pulsed with a faint, eldritch light. Drawn by a force we could not resist, we approached, the air growing colder, the whispers louder. Within the hollow lay a pool of water, still and black as obsidian, reflecting neither our images nor the twisted branches above. The camp manager, his voice trembling with a mix of fear and reverence, spoke of the well of whispers, a conduit to the guardians, a gateway to the knowledge and horrors that lay beyond the veil. Compelled by an insatiable curiosity, one among us, Alex, reached out to touch the water's surface. The moment his fingers brushed against the liquid, the air erupted with a cacophony of screams, and the ground beneath us trembled. The forest, alive with unseen energies, writhed in response to the desecration of the well. In the chaos, the boundary between reality and nightmare blurred. The forest revealed its true nature, a realm where the laws of nature held no sway, and the guardians of old reigned supreme. Our very sanity began to fray as we witnessed impossibilities unfold before our eyes trees, bending in impossible angles. The sky bleeding colors unknown to the spectrum, and the very earth pulsating with a malevolent intent. As we fled from the well, the realization dawned upon us that our intrusion had awakened something ancient, something that had lain dormant, content to watch from the shadows, but now it stirred its hunger peaked by our presence. Our story, a tapestry of fear and desperation, weaves on, the threads leading us into the heart of darkness, the chilling secret of our clamping nightmare, far from revealed, burrows deeper into the enigma. What lies ahead is a path shrouded in shadow, our fates entwined with the ancient guardians of the forest, their motives as inscrutable as the dark. And so we continue, our tale hanging in the balance, a reminder that some secrets, once unearthed, refuse to be buried. As we stood, paralyzed by the vanishing path, the forest's whispers crescendoed into an unintelligible chant, echoing from the unseen depths. The air grew colder, and a dense fog began to seep from the ground, wrapping around our ankles like cold, clammy fingers. We realized with mounting horror that the forest was not just alive, but sentient 
responding to our fear and confusion with malevolent glee. With no path to guide us, we decided to move forward, guided only by the faint light of our flashlights, which seemed to dim with every step. The forest around us began to change, the trees bending and twisting into grotesque shapes, their branches clawing fingers of a desperate specter. As we pressed on, the ground beneath us became spongy, giving way to marshland that threatened to swallow us whole. We heard soft, squelching footsteps mirroring our own, just beyond the veil of fog. Yet, whenever we turned, there was nothing but the dense thicket of the forest staring back at us. It was then that we stumbled upon a clearing, eerily illuminated by the light of a full moon that seemed impossibly large and tinged with an unnatural hue. At the center of the clearing stood a dilapidated cabin, its windows dark, the door slightly ajar, beckoning us with an unspoken promise of refuge. With no other options, we approached the cabin, each step heavy with dread. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the silence was punctuated only by the creaking of the old wood under our feet. As we crossed the threshold, the door swung shut behind us with a resounding thud, plunging us into darkness. Our flashlights flickered back to life, revealing the cabin's interior. It was sparsely furnished, with layers of dust covering every surface. In the center of the room, a table set for three, as if awaiting guests. The plates were empty, but the glasses were filled with a dark, viscous liquid that seemed to absorb the light. As we explored further, we found traces of occupancy, a child's toy lying abandoned on the floor, a book left open as if recently read, and, most disturbingly, a series of photographs pinned to the wall. They depicted various groups of people, smiling, unaware of the horrors that awaited them in the forest. With a sinking feeling, we realized that these were the previous guests of the glamping site, their fates unknown. The cabin, it seemed, was a relic of the camp's dark history, a silent witness to the countless souls ensnared by the forest's curse. The realization hit us like a physical blow. We were not the first to suffer this fate, and unless we found a way out, we would not be the last. Our deliberations were cut short by a sound from the upper floor, a soft, rhythmic thumping like the heartbeat of the cabin itself. Drawn by a mixture of fear and curiosity, we made our way to the narrow staircase, the wood groaning under our weight. At the top of the stairs, a narrow hallway stretched before us, its end lost in shadows. The thumping grew louder, more insistent, as if beckoning us forward. With each step, the air grew colder, the darkness deeper, until we stood before the door from which the sound emanated. With a collective breath, we reached for the handle, the metal icy to the touch. As the door creaked open, the story was poised on the brink of revelation, the chilling secret lurking just beyond the threshold, waiting to pull us deeper into the nightmare. And there, in the heart of the darkness, the true horror awaited, its form obscured, its intentions unknown, a new chapter of our glamping nightmare about to unfold, leaving our fate hanging in the balance, a tale to be continued. As the door swung open with an eerie silence, the thumping ceased abruptly, plunging the room a suffocating stillness. 
our flashlights, now our only lifeline, cast trembling beams across the room, revealing an attic cluttered with relics of the past, trunks filled with moth-eaten clothes, broken toys, and faded photographs that captured moments of joy long gone. The air was thick with dust, each breath feeling like a gulp of the past. And amidst the clutter, a large dust-covered mirror stood against the far wall, its surface dull and unreflective. Drawn to it as if by an unseen force, we approached, our steps hesitant. The closer we got, the colder the air became a thin layer of frost began to form on the glass. As we stood before the mirror, our reflections were conspicuously absent, swallowed by the opaque surface. Then, without warning, the mirror began to ripple, like the surface of a disturbed pond. And through the frost, shapes began to form, scenes played out in the silvery depths. Images of the camp manager welcoming unsuspecting guests. The joyous beginnings of numerous glamping adventures. And then, a shift to darkness, fleeting glimpses of terror, confusion, and the inescapable embrace of the forest. We were spellbound, watching the history of the camp unfold. Each scene, a piece of the puzzle, that had led us to this moment. But as we watched, a new image began to take shape, one that filled us with dread. It was us, standing in the attic, staring into the mirror. Only behind our reflected images, shadows moved, creeping closer with malevolent intent. We turned, our hearts racing, but the room behind us was empty. When we looked back, mirror's surface had returned to its opaque stillness. Our reflections now visible, but distorted, as if underwater. The realization hit us with chilling clarity. The mirror was not just a reflection of the past, but a window into something much darker. A realm where the horrors of the camp were not just memories, but living breathing entities. The sound of a distant door slamming jolted us from our trance, breaking the mirror's spell. The attic, once a silent tomb of memories, now felt alive with unseen threats. We knew we had to leave, to escape the cabin and the forest grasp before it was too late. Rushing down the stairs, we found the cabin transformed. The dust was gone replaced by an unsettling cleanliness, as if the cabin itself was preparing for new guests. The table was set, the glasses filled with the dark liquid now bubbling, emitting a foul odor. The front door, once closed, stood open, revealing the forest bathed in an eerie glow, not from the moon, but from an unknown source deep within the woods. It beckoned us, promising answers but threatening unspeakable horrors. As we stepped into the night, the forest seemed to breathe, the trees swaying in a non-existent wind, their branches reaching out, not to harm, but to guide. We followed, not by choice, but by necessity, drawn deeper into the heart of the forest true nature of our glamping nightmare awaited, its secrets veiled in shadow, its conclusion yet to be written. As the door swung open, a gust of chilling air rushed past us, extinguishing our flashlights in one fell swoop, plunging us into an abyssal darkness. Our hearts raced in unison with the now deafening thumps seemed to emanate from the very walls of the cabin. Straining our eyes to pierce the darkness, we perceived
perceived a faint, pulsating glow at the far end of the room. It was an ethereal light, neither warm nor welcoming, yet it beckoned us forward with an irresistible pull. With tentative steps, we advanced towards the source of the light, each movement echoed by the creaking floorboards beneath our feet. The glow emanated from an old, dust-covered mirror, its frame ornate, but tarnished by time. The glass was not reflective, but instead shimmered with an otherworldly light, casting eerie shadows that danced along the walls. As we drew closer, the thumping subsided, giving way to a low, murmuring whisper that seemed to emanate from within the mirror itself. The whispers were incoherent at first, a jumble of voices that intertwined and overlapped, speaking in tongues foreign and familiar. But slowly, a voice rose above the others, clear and commanding, though its words remained shrouded in mystery. Mesmerized, we watched as the surface of the mirror began to ripple, like the surface of a disturbed pond. Images started to form within its depths, fleeting and fragmented visions of events, both past and future. We saw the forest in its ancient majesty, untouched by human hands. And then, in a blink, it was a flame consumed by a ravenous inferno. Faces appeared in the mirror, some twisted in agony, others serene, as if embracing their fate. The visions grew more personal, showing glimpses of our lives before the glamping trip, moments of joy and sorrow, love and loss. It was as if the mirror sought to remind us what we had left behind, or perhaps what we stood to lose. But as quickly as they came, the visions faded, leaving only the pulsating glow and the whispering voice, which grew more insistent, as if urging us to understand a message we could not decipher. The air around us grew colder still, our breaths visible in the ghostly light of the mirror. It was then that we noticed, for the first time, the shadows cast by the mirror's light did not match our own. They writhed and twisted on the walls, taking on forms both human and monstrous. A silent audience to the unfolding drama, we turned to flee, but the door through which we had entered was gone, replaced by smooth, unyielding wood Trapped and desperate, we turned back to the mirror, the only source of light in the suffocating darkness. The whispering voice reached a crescendo, a cacophony of sound that filled the room and our minds, leaving no room for thought. And there, in the heart of the mirror's glow, a new vision began to take shape one that promised to reveal the darkest secrets of the forest and the true nature of our nightmare. But as the image cleared, ready to unveil the horrors that lay ahead, the story must pause, leaving the truth just out of reach, a tale to be continued.
As the door swung open, a chilling gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing our flashlights and plunging us into an abyssal darkness. Our eyes strained against the void, seeking shapes in the impenetrable black. The rhythmic thumping had ceased, replaced by a palpable silence that seemed to hum with anticipation. The air was thick with the scent of old earth and something else, something faintly metallic, tinged with the essence of fear. We stood on the threshold, hearts pounding, as our eyes gradually adjusted to the darkness. The room was sparse, the moonlight casting long, twisted shadows across the bare floorboards. In the far corner, something caught our eye, a shape, huddled and still. It was impossible to make out details, but the silhouette suggested a person, or what was once a person, seated against the wall. Compelled by a mixture of dread and an inexplicable urge to understand, we stepped forward. The floorboards creaked under our weight, the sound unnervingly loud in the silence. As we drew closer, the figure remained motionless, its features obscured by the shadows. Then, without warning, a low guttural sound emanated from the figure, a sound that was not quite a groan, but not entirely human. It was a sound of profound sorrow and unspeakable pain, resonating with the very walls of the cabin, vibrating through the soles of our feet. Frozen in place, we watched as the figure slowly raised its head, the moonlight revealing hollow, empty eye sockets, where eyes should have been. The face, if it could still be called that, was a tapestry of scars, each telling a tale of horror beyond comprehension. The figure's mouth opened, but instead of words, a cascade of dark, viscous liquid poured forth, pooling on the floorboards in an inky black stain. In that moment, the air shifted, the temperature dropping further, as if the very essence of the room was being drained away. A sense of deep, unyielding despair washed over us, a despair that clawed at our minds, whispering of fates worse than death. We knew then that we were not merely witnesses to the horror, but part of a cycle a repeating tableau of fear and suffering. The forest, the camp, the cabin. They were all cogs in a machine fueled by terror. A machine that had ensnared countless souls before us and would continue long after we were gone. As we stood, transfixed by the horror before us, the shadows in the room began to coalesce taking on shapes that were both familiar and grotesquely alien. Whispers filled the air, each voice a remnant of a lost soul, their words intertwining in a symphony of madness. The urge to flee was overwhelming, yet our feet remained rooted to the spot, as if the cabin itself wished to keep us there to the endless cycle of horror. The shadows drew closer, their forms becoming more distinct, more threatening. And then, just as the darkness threatened to engulf us, a sliver of light pierced the gloom, a crack of dawn visible through the boarded up windows. The shadows recoiled, their forms dissolving into the ether, leaving behind a heavy silence. We knew this respite was temporary, a fleeting moment of grace in a world consumed by darkness. The cabin, the forest, and the chilling secret they harbored were far from done with us. As the first rays of sunlight filtered through the cracks, illuminating the desolation within, we understood.
understood that our nightmare was far from over. The day brought no salvation, only the stark realization that our escape was a labyrinth with no end. And somewhere beyond the deceptive calm of daylight, the horrors of the night lay in wait, ready to resume their macabre dance. Thus, our tale pauses here on the precipice of unseen terrors and unfathomable mysteries, the chilling secret of our glamping nightmare lingering like a specter in the light of dawn, its conclusion a story yet to be told. As the door swung open, a gust of cold air rushed past us, carrying with it a faint, almost forgotten melody. A lullaby, it seemed, that resonated with the sorrow of ages. The room beyond was shrouded in darkness, save for a single beam of moonlight that pierced through a crack in the ceiling, illuminating a corner of the room. Our eyes slowly adjusted, and in that corner we saw a figure hunched over an ancient wooden cradle rocking it gently. The figure was cloaked in shadows, its features indiscernible, but the maternal gesture was unmistakable. The lullaby grew louder, its melody weaving through the room like a tangible presence, filling the space with an overwhelming sense of longing and loss. We stood frozen, caught between the instinct to flee and the inexplicable urge to step closer, to understand the nature of this spectral guardian. It was then that the figure paused, its head tilting slightly, as if sensing our presence. The room fell silent, the lullaby cut short, leaving an oppressive stillness in its wake. Compelled by a force we could not resist, we moved towards the cradle. As we drew nearer, the figure receded into the shadows, dissolving into the darkness, leaving behind only the cradle and its unseen occupant. Tentatively, we peered into the cradle, expecting to confront some new horror. Instead, we found it empty, save for a single wilted rose, its petals blackened with age, lying atop a small, neatly folded piece of parchment. With trembling hands, we unfolded the parchment, revealing a hastily scribbled note. The ink was faded, but the message was clear. Beware the heart of the forest, for it beats with a hunger that cannot be sated. The price of curiosity is a soul forever bound. The realization that we were standing at the precipice of something ancient and malevolent sent a shiver down our spines. The forest, the camp, the cabin, they were all part of a larger, darker design, a trap set by the very essence of the wilderness itself. As we stood in contemplation, the ground beneath us began to tremble, a low rumble that grew in intensity until the cabin itself seemed to quake in fear. The walls groaned, the floorboards buckled, and the air was filled with the sound of splintering wood. We fled the cabin, stumbling into the night, the ground still shaking beneath our feet. Behind us, the cabin shuddered one final time before collapsing in upon itself, swallowed by the earth as if it had never existed. The forest was alive with movement trees swaying in a frenzied dance, their branches reaching out to snatch at us as we ran. The path before us was ever-changing, the landscape morphing with each glance, leading us deeper into the heart of the wilderness. In the chaos, we became separated, each of us lost in our own labyrinth of fear and confusion. The forest's whispers had grown into a deafening roar, a 
cacophony of voices that mocked our plight, promising an end that would never come. And so, our journey continued, each step taking us further from the world we knew, deeper into the domain of an ancient and unspeakable horror. Our fate, like the path before us, remained uncertain, shrouded in the shadows of the forest that had become our prison. The chilling secret of our glamping nightmare had unfolded into a tale of survival, a desperate struggle against an unseen force that sought to claim us, body and soul. But the true horror lay in the realization that our escape, should it ever come, would not be the end, but the beginning of a far greater nightmare, the depths of which were yet to be revealed. Alone and disoriented, we wandered through the ever-shifting landscape of the forest, each twist and turn leading us deeper into its enigmatic heart. The darkness seemed to pulsate with a life of its own, the shadows stretching and contracting as if breathing. The once familiar sounds of the night were now alien and menacing, filled with the rustle of unseen creatures and the whisper of leaves that seemed to murmur our names. In my isolation, the line between reality and nightmare began to blur. Trees appeared to bend and twist into grotesque faces that leered at me from the darkness, their branches clawing at the air like the hands of the damned. The ground beneath my feet seemed to undulate, roots snaking across the path, trying to ensnare me, to drag me down into the unfathomable depths below. Driven by a primal fear, I stumbled forward, my 
only thought to escape the oppressive darkness that threatened to consume me. The forest seemed endless. A maze designed not just to confound the body, but to ensnare the mind, stripping away reason and hope until nothing remained but raw, unbridled terror. It was then, in my darkest moment, that I saw it, a flicker of light, distant and ephemeral, but undeniable. With the last vestiges of my strength, I pushed towards it, the light growing brighter, more substantial with each desperate step. It was not the warm glow of salvation I had hoped for, but rather a cold, blue luminescence that bathed the forest in an otherworldly hue. The source of the light was a clearing, unlike any I had encountered before. At its center stood an ancient tree, its gnarled and twisted form towering above the canopy. The light emanated from its trunk, pulsing in a steady rhythm that mirrored the beating of a heart. The ground around the tree was littered with objects trinkets, photographs, pieces of clothing, all encircled by a ring of stones that seemed to pulse with the same eerie light. Drawn by a force I could not resist, I stepped into the clearing, my presence disturbing the delicate balance of this sacred space. The forest fell silent, the oppressive atmosphere replaced by a charged expectancy, as if the very air awaited my next move. As I approached the tree, the light intensified, revealing carvings in its bark symbols and runes of ancient origin, their meanings lost to time. The air around the tree vibrated with power, the ground thrumming beneath my feet as if the tree itself was communicating, sharing its ancient wisdom and its insatiable hunger. It was then I realized the tree was not just a part of the forest. It was the heart of the forest, the source of its malevolent energy. The objects around its base were not mere offerings, but anchors, binding lost souls to this place, their energy feeding the insatiable hunger of the ancient entity before me. As this realization dawned, the light from the tree coalesced into a form, humanoid yet ethereal, its features shifting and changing like the forest itself. It spoke in a voice that was both the whisper of leaves and the roar of thunder, a voice that resonated within the very core of my being. You have come far, but the journey is not yet over. The path you seek lies within, but the key is a sacrifice of your own making. Will you bind yourself to this place, to become a part of its eternal vigil? Or will you forge a new path, one that may lead to salvation or further damnation? The choice was mine, but the consequences were unknowable. The entity waited. Its presence a heavy weight upon my soul, as the story of our glamping nightmare hung in the balance. The continuation of our tale suspended in the space between breaths, a whisper in the dark waiting to be unleashed. As I stood before the ancient heart of the forest, the gravity of the entity's proposition weighed heavily upon me. The pulsing light from the tree bathed the clearing in an eerie glow, casting long, twisted shadows that seemed to dance with malevolent intent. The silence was oppressive, broken only by the slow, rhythmic beating that resonated from the tree, echoing the cadence of a heart deep within the earth. The choice was clear, yet impossibly complex, to bind myself to the forest 
was to accept an eternal vigil, to become part of the very fabric of this haunted wilderness, forever entwined with its dark legacy. Yet, the alternative to forge a new path was fraught with uncertainty, a journey that could lead to salvation or spiral further into the depths of horror. In that moment of indecision, the forest seemed to hold its breath, the air charged with anticipation, the entity's form flickered, its ethereal presence both compelling and terrifying. I realized then that the true horror of this place was not in the twisted shapes of the trees or the unseen creatures that lurked in the shadows in the insidious way, it ensnared the mind, weaving a web of fear and doubt that threatened to consume one's very soul. With a resolve born of desperation, I chose to reject the entity's offer. I would not become another lost soul bound to the heart of the forest. The realization of my decision seemed to ripple through the clearing, the atmosphere shifting as if the forest itself was reacting to my defiance. The entity's form coalesced into a more defined shape, its features sharpening into a visage of ancient malice. So be it, it whispered, its voice a cacophony of every fear I had ever known. The path you choose is fraught with peril, a journey through the darkness of your own making. But know this, the forest does not forgive, and its memory is long. With those final words, the entity dissipated, the light from the tree extinguishing as if snuffed out by an unseen hand. The clearing was plunged into darkness, the oppressive weight of the forest closing in once more. But within that darkness, a spark of hope flickered path I had chosen was my own, a defiant stand against the ancient horror that sought to claim me. As I stumbled through the darkness, guided by this newfound resolve, the forest seemed to recoil, its twisted paths unfolding before me, leading me back toward the world I had left behind. The night was still fraught with shadows unseen terrors, but the oppressive presence of the entity was gone, replaced by a silent acknowledgement of my escape. When I finally emerged from the forest, the first light of dawn was breaking on the horizon, casting a pale light over a world that seemed both familiar and irrevocably changed. The horror of the glamping nightmare was behind me, but its shadow lingered, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lies just beyond the edge of the known world. In the end, the chilling secret of our glamping nightmare was not just the ancient entity that dwelled within the heart of the forest, but the realization that the greatest horrors are those that we carry within us, the fears and doubts that whisper in the dark, urging us to tread paths best left untraveled. And as I walked away from the forest, the first rays of the sun warming my back, I knew that the story of that night would remain with me forever, a haunting tale of terror and defiance in the face of an unimaginable horror.